What's up everyone? I'm Landon with LMR.com. Today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to install some floor carpet into a 2005 to 2014 S197 Mustang. Let's get right into it. All right, so today we're gonna to be working on this 2007 Mustang GT and installing some new carpet from ACC. Depending on the condition of the carpet that's in your car, it may be time to replace it. When it comes to purchasing new carpet for these cars, you'll usually see two different options, a standard option and a mass spec option. The mass spec option is a closer match to the factory carpet since it has an EVA backing, which provides better sound deadening and heat insulation. This backing does make the carpet heavier than the standard option, so if weight savings is a higher priority, then the standard option is probably for you. I've already removed the seats, center console, and factory carpet from the car. If you would like to see those dedicated removal videos, check out the links in the description. Also in the description will be a list of tools. That way you can scan your toolbox to make sure you have everything that you need before you get started. Prior to the installation of the carpet, I would recommend that you leave the carpet unfolded for several hours or even a few days to help relax it. Even better, you can set it in the sun on a warm day if you have that option given the time of year you plan on installing it. To kick things off, go ahead and dislodge the two rearward push pins Remove any floor mat anchors from the carpet. There are a few different styles used from 2005 to 2014. To remove the style of floor mat anchor from this car, slide a pick or similar device through the opening to depress the tab and then release the clip. Remove it from the carpet. There was another floor mat retainer on this carpet in the form of a screw style. You can identify this by looking at the anchor from underneath. If you want to repurpose the pinch weld retainer on the sides of the factory carpet, cut the head of the staple and then separate the retainers from the carpet. Do this for all the retainers that are attached to the carpet. Use a heat gun and carefully remove the larger pieces of leftover tape from the door jam area. Wipe away any remaining residue with a clear coat safe adhesive remover. If needed, use an all-in-one polish to polish away any scuff marks in this area. Wipe the area with a prep spray to remove the polishing oils. The new carpet from ACC that we're installing includes some jute padding, which is optional. If you choose to install these, you want to dry fit them first to determine where they go and their orientation. Once this is figured out, spray the correct side with a light layer of spray adhesive. Install the jute padding into their corresponding places. First, you want to measure the distance of the old carpet where the center cut takes place. Go ahead and cut the new carpet down the center. Remember, always cut less than you need and enlarge as you go. Position the old carpet over the new one and line up the carpets as close and as accurate as possible. Continue marking and trimming the front, rear, and center areas of the carpet. I would recommend that you leave the side areas that install underneath the scuff plate alone until the new carpet is in the car. Once this is finished, fold the new carpet so that it can be installed into the car. Begin maneuvering the carpet into place. With the carpet in the car, start by enlarging the area as needed around the parking brake assembly. Run your hands across the carpet to ensure it is even with the contours of the floor. Reference the cutout in the old carpet for the electrical harness. Take some measurements and then transfer these to the new carpet. Cut the area with a razor blade and feed the harness through the opening. Now you can mark the holes for the seat hardware. I started with the two rear holes first. Whenever the hole was identified, I poked a hole in the carpet with an appropriate tool and marked the area with a silver marker. Repeat these same steps for the rearward hole for the push pin and the seat belt anchor. I then lifted the carpet up and cut the holes by running the correct size hole saw in reverse. When doing this, pay attention not to cut your hand that's underneath the carpet. The hole saw method creates a very clean factory appearing hole. If you don't have a hole saw, well then a good old fashioned sharp razor blade will do the trick. For the inboard front seat bolt hole, you'll need to identify the position and then cut the carpet with a razor blade to mimic the factory opening. The two console studs can easily be marked by pushing down on the carpet 
to push them through. Lift up the carpet and then cut the holes with the correct size hole saw. Then you can repeat these same steps for the other side, including the holes for the parking brake assembly retaining bolts. Now we can start trimming the sides of the carpet. Work the carpet with your hands so that it follows the contours of the floorboard. Mark the areas that need to be trimmed and then trim the carpet with a razor blade. This includes the areas for the scuff plate clips. I'm going to be repurposing the factory pinch weld retainers. If you do the same, you'll need to have an automotive grade upholstery staple gun. Lay out the retainers along the pinch weld and then mark them with a marker. Lift up the carpet and position a block of wood underneath the retainer. Install two staples just like the factory. Fold the ends of the staple with a flathead screwdriver. Repeat these steps for all of the pinch weld retainers. Go ahead and mock up the kick panel and trim any additional carpet so that the panel installs the way it should and any retainers that secure the panel to the car have a clear path and are not obstructed by the carpet. Take some measurements of the floor mat retainers from the original carpet and transfer these measurements to the new carpet. Cut or poke these areas as needed and reinstall the retainers. At this time, you'll want to vacuum the carpet to remove all of the lint and manufacturing debris. I find that a tool designed to remove pet hair works best for this. If needed, apply Velcro to any areas of the carpet that may need it. I chose to install some Velcro in the center area near the parking brake assembly and the two small sections in the rear. When doing this, make sure you wipe the back side of the carpet and the body of the car with a prep spray. Depending on your level of detail and how dirty your interior is, you may use this opportunity to thoroughly clean all of your interior parts that were removed. Use a cleaner specifically designed for delicate interior surfaces and a soft brush to agitate any ingrained dirt. Of course, always test an inconspicuous area first before committing to the entire panel. Wipe away the residue with a dry microfiber towel, followed by a damp one to neutralize the cleaner. Now it's time for reassembly. Reposition the rear interior quarter panels. Be sure and reroute and reconnect the electrical connector related to the seat belt. Then you can fully engage the clips and reinstall the push pins. Reinstall the seat belt anchor bolts and torque this hardware to 30 pound feet. Reinstall the kick panels and any associated fasteners. Carefully heat the old double-sided tape on the back of the scuff plate and remove it. Wipe away any residue with a microfiber towel and an adhesive remover. Wipe the area again with a prep spray. Take some new automotive grade double-sided tape and install it onto the scuff plate just like the factory tape was. Dog ear the tape and then reinstall the scuff plates on the correct side. Remove the backing and apply firm pressure to the scuff plate to fully adhere the tape. Poke holes in the rear of the carpet for the two push pins and reinstall them. At this time, you can go ahead and reinstall the center console to reinstall the rear seat backs. The bolts have a torque spec of 17 pound feet. Reinstall the lower seat cushion. Now you can reinstall the front seats. The four bolts that retain the front seat have a torque value of 35 pound feet. After that, you can check over your work and then you're good to go. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap things up for today's video. As always, I hope this one has provided you with the value that you needed. If it did, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. And until next time, y'all know what to do for all things 2005 to 2014 S197 Mustang. Keep it right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR.com.